Uh, my name is Eric Kalik. I'm the officer in inclusive planning in the housing and planning department at the city of Austin. So the city of Austin has taken lots of different actions um, to attempt to help create more affordable housing in the city, uh, many of which have been supported by taxpayers. So um, city of Austin residents have voted numerous times to, um, to vote for bond funding for affordable housing. Um, the most recent bond funding was in 2018 and voters approved 250 million for affordable housing, which is used to subsidize um, home ownership opportunities, home repair, um, home repair services for, for low-income folks, as well as rental housing, um, and also purchase land for affordable housing. In about five years, uh, we should have about $350 million more on the ground uh, after the uh, general obligation bonds that were just passed. Uh, the hope is that we're moving the needle. Uh, it's a huge, huge undertaking, and uh, it's not something that we can solve overnight, uh, but every new affordable housing unit that we put on the ground is one step closer to solving the problem. I think that you can really say that Austin has densified. Uh, there's been uh, a very heavy focus on, uh, on uh, height, uh, particularly around transit corridors, downtown, uh, and especially at uh, transit-oriented developments like Plaza Saltillo or some of our other uh, uh, metro stations. Um, I think that we are moving away from the uh, quarter-acre lot, single-family, detached, uh, sprawl um, uh, aesthetic. And uh, much more toward uh, townhouses and apartments and condos and and uh, higher density living, where you can really achieve all of your daily needs and activities uh, in a walking distance. That's where we have to go. Um, the one thing that they're not making any more of is land, so uh, we have to maximize the use of our land as much as we possibly can. I think the one thing that will really help move the needle is. Uh, uh, increasing mixed income and mixed use developments uh, because it's not just the cost of housing that you need to consider it's the cost of transportation uh, the cost of all of the other ancillary needs that you have for your daily life so however much you spend on your house if you have to drive 35 40 minutes to get to work every day then that's just time that you're spending on your commute um, which essentially equates to cost of housing so by focusing in our our density by building more mixed income developments where we can have higher income individuals helping to subsidize uh, those lower income households. Uh, I think that we can really make an impact on the city. Well, Austin is, a, I, I would say, one of the most open and welcoming cities I've ever lived in. Um, uh, the biggest way, or the best way to uh, ensure that you have buy-in from your community, um, from your council members all the way down to just your neighbors, uh, is by being open, by being honest. Uh, if you tell your neighbor what you're going to do, nine times out of ten, even if they don't like it, they appreciate being told. Um, so looking someone in the eye and saying, I'm going to build 60 units on this parcel, goes over a lot better than just having a sign out front that says, we're building units, um, and no one really knows what's happening. Right. So city limits. Uh, uh, we, we go through a, an annexation period uh, every so often uh, where a property on the outside of the city limits wants to become part of the city of Austin. Then annex that annexation process is voluntary. Uh, the state of Texas has a uh, restriction on um, uh, uh, what they call forced annexation. Um, but to your point, all of the surrounding cities, whether it's Pflugerville, Buda, Kyle, uh, Dripping Springs, uh, Leander, as these cities grow, it's going to have a significant impact on how the city of Austin grows, not just in terms of how we develop, but the jobs that are available, the transportation that we use, uh, and the transit options that are available. So uh, when we have the Project Connect lines going through, we know that uh, the red line going up from Leander all the way into downtown is only the first step, and we're going to see a lot more of that in the future. Uh, whether or not we have uh, train lines that run throughout the entirety of Central Texas, 
I think that's a hundred year goal. Um, but just in the, in the immediate future, in the next 10 years, will we have this Project Connect project underway? Uh, I can definitely see uh, a focus of density, uh, not just within the city limits, but at those nodes, those corridors that we see um, uh, throughout, the year, throughout the region that are really gonna tie areas like Pflugerville to, Jipping, to Dripping Springs or uh, tie Kyle to Leander. The one thing that I, that I try to mention every time we talk about affordable housing is uh, time and money. Uh, in the city of Austin, it takes about three years for any development to get built. Uh, so it takes time to put units on the ground, uh, even though we, as I mentioned, we just had that $350 million general obligation bond package pass. Uh, we won't actually see units occupied uh, from that bond until 2025. Uh, and that's the time aspect of it. The money aspect of it is prices are going up. Uh, materials are increasing, uh, cost of materials are increasing, cost of land is increasing, uh, cost of pro uh, professional services are increasing. Uh, so as a gap financer, the Austin Housing Finance Corporation will issue a loan to a development to ensure long-term affordability. Uh, but those gaps are getting bigger and those checks are getting deeper. So uh, we know that we're going to uh, have to invest heavily in the future and continue to invest in order to achieve the goals that council has given us, which is to provide long-term sustainable affordable housing throughout the city.